I wanted to bring up because things are kind of changing, things are developing. You're starting to see, you mentioned the Ontario League uh, postponing some things. What are you guys kind of doing to, you know, get on, the, get ahead of things and, and stay on top of things? Yeah, I mean, uh, what, keep your fingers crossed? I mean, <laughs> I suppose that's about all you can do, right? Like, our guys have been vaccinated and, and the CDC hasn't changed their definition of fully vaccinated. Um, you know, we will adhere to whatever policies the our administration and, you know, from President Rogers to, to Bob Moosebrugger to, to Ben Beatty, whatever they tell us we're supposed to do or what's in our best interest, we will we'll do. But right now it's just continue the way we've been doing it. You know, thankfully our guys have all taken the initiative to get vaccinated and they're doing the best job they can. And, and then all we can do is talk about trying to be smart about knowing who you're hanging around and, and, and being real cautious about putting yourself in a situation where you could potentially, you know, contract it. So other than that, we're just, you know, we're, we read the, the news, you know, and, and, and read stuff online and, and watch TV and you see um, cancellations here, cancellations there in our sport, um, in college athletics, in other sports. So all, all we can do is just try to do the best we can every day and and make sure that we're putting ourselves in a position where we're able to play on our end. We talked about it briefly late last week. Um, you talked about kind of starting things up with second semester. Obviously, kids are getting new schedules, they're getting new, uh, you know, just day-to-day -day lives here. Um, how do you adjust to that? How do you kind of make things work? And then does that practice schedule change because of second semester at all? Well, we're this week, you know, the last time we talked, we talked about our schedule being different because we, we played a Thursday-Friday game and then our guys left to go home for break and then we came back and, and we practiced on a, on, on a Saturday and then a Sunday and then a Monday and then we left for Milwaukee. So this week we're back to what we consider to be our normal everyday work week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice, play Friday, Saturday. Uh, we're, we're fortunate this week that our guys don't are not in school. So they've got a little bit more free time so we can do some more. Our window to do some things is a little bit bigger and it allows us to, whether it's go over some things or watch some video or teach or, or bring guys back at a different time or, or allow them to sleep in. Those, those kinds of things is what, are what we're doing next, this week because we know next week with school starting, we will get back into what our routine was the first semester. I know there was a bit of an injury bug going around with the before the holidays and now you guys have had some time to rest up. Um, any updates on guys like Zach, TJ, uh, maybe Chris Cunningham? Yeah, uh, TJ, TJ played. He, he came back from his injury before the holiday and was, was healthy enough to play. Unfortunately, he blocked a shot in our second game and then that he, he had to leave the game that game. But then when we got back here and we restarted, he's been practicing. So he's he's ready to go. Zach Rose is 100% back to healthy, ready to go. And, and Evan Doherty is now as close as he's been since before he you know fractured his foot. So he's been skating in a, in a red jersey, which is a no contact jersey. But Evan's been doing everything that everybody else has been doing. Um, we're not sure he'll be 100% ready to go for this weekend, but the plan is that he continue to practice in red and then next week wear a colored jersey and be, be ready to go. With uh, a conference-only schedule to close the year out, some of these guys you've already seen this year in series, whether it be at home or on the road, um, do things kind of change within game plans because you've seen them before? Or, you know, what do you, what do you guys kind of take from tape there in those first go-around? Well, there's definitely familiarity with the, with the opponents because it is. We've got, we've got seven conference series remaining. so. We play every team in the league one more time, or two more times if you look at this. One more series, two more games. So three of those series are at Slater Family Arena and four on the road. So we just have to do the best we can each week. And if you look at you know, where we're at, obviously we want to climb as high in the standings as we can and, and ultimately be at home for that first round of the CCHA playoffs. So you know, we can only look, we're going to take it you know, day by day, week by week, and and our first challenge is, is at St. Thomas this weekend. So, but it is going to be, I haven't looked at everybody's schedule, but I don't know if, if anybody plays non-league games the second half. I, I don't know that, but I know for us, it's, it's every week is a chance for us to move up the standings, and, and we know we're playing seven conference series to finish it off here. Uh, going back to the Milwaukee series, Providence, Yale, again, Providence, another ranked team. You guys played them tough at least for a couple periods there, and then they kind of pulled away. Your biggest, what was your biggest takeaway from the Providence game in particular? You know, we knew that they were going to be a real good team going in, and we played 
uh, again, we, we got down early. Uh, they, they scored uh, not, you know, I think it was a minute 30 or two minutes into the game, and, and then they scored not too long after that. We were down 2 nothing in the first period, and we were able to chip away and get back to tie it up. And then in the second period, might have been as good a period as we've had all year. We played really well, had a bunch of really good opportunities. We, we did a lot of things right. And un unfortunately, we weren't able to capitalize on those from, a, from an offensive perspective. We hit three posts. Uh, we, so we just we, we played really, really well. And, and they're a team that it's hard to play well against. And so we take away that we're, when we are doing things the way we're capable of and up to our standard, uh, we're, we can play with anybody. And we're, we're as good a team as, 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 as there is out there. Uh, we have to we have to find a way to do that more consistently. And then in the third, the, the third period started well, and uh, unfortunately they, they made a play, uh, kind of a, a, an odd little play back in our own end, and, and turned over and then ends up in our net. Now it's four two. Then we pull the goalie to try and give ourselves a, a good chance to to get within a goal, and they score an empty net goal. But for the most part, we what we take away is we played really well against a, a real good team, and then and it was a difficult loss and a frustrating loss, and then we were able to find a way to bounce back the next day against a, a Yale team that played better uh, their second game than they did their first game. So we, we button up the non-conference uh, schedule with a 3-3-2 and two record, and, and you know we played all but uh, two of those games on the road. And uh, we did a really nice job, we felt like, uh, with, with our, our non-conference and, and playing some real good teams in, in difficult venues and all that stuff. I know you talk often about chances and you know, how you evaluate them versus you know, what you guys give the other team. <coughs> um, in your mind, what fits that criteria? Is it just getting open shots? Is it, is it executing plays? What, in your mind, you know, equates to a good chance at a goal? For yeah, so I mean, the, the, the easiest way to put it is if, if, you, if you draw a a, a line from, from the goal to the dots and then out and across the top of the circle. So it looks kind of like home plate there uh, or it looks like a house depending on which side you're looking at it. Th those chances from in that area that are clean chances where the goalie's got to make a, make a legitimate save, those are what we would call, we would consider grade A scoring opportunities. You know, a, a wrist shot from, from the blue line with no traffic in front where the goalie just sees it and, you know, catches it. That, we don't consider that to be a scoring opportunity. So it's not just a shot on goal. There's more to it than that. It's a, it's a legitimate opportunity to score. So we feel like we've been doing a better job generating those kinds of opportunities of late. And we need to continue to do that because that's something that we've done in the past around here. Is there an element of discipline then with, with you guys coaching these players? Like, hey, work, work the puck towards that area, try to get those chances. How much discipline is involved in that? We've, it's, it's funny you bring up discipline. We've talked about discipline uh, a lot lately uh, and, and more of it's discipline in our actions, discipline in not taking that penalty that's going to put us down, uh, the, the stick penalties and the, the, those kind of penalties that, that are tough to kill off. Uh, but, but discipline in, in our approach to how we play with the puck is also a piece to it. You know, not what we call hope plays, not trying to just hope something in there, being disciplined enough to, to know What's a, take what's available, whether it's off the rush or in zone and, and discipline. And some, sometimes the discipline is hitting the net. You know, one of the things we talked about that first game of the Ohio State series, when we had the three goal lead, we had some really good opportunities that we didn't capitalize on because we missed the net. So hitting the net is, is something from an offensive standpoint that you can discipline yourselves into having some, some more control over that opportunity. So uh, yeah, we've, we've talked about all those things. Uh, you mentioned taking those undisciplined penalties. Do you feel like your team's taken too many of those? <coughs> uh, of late, we've had some penalties that, are, that we felt like were undisciplined. You know, we, we took three undisciplined penalties uh, in our last game, which we didn't like at all. And, and that's just hard. You know, we were, we were killing off a penalty, and, and we took an undisciplined penalty to go down five on three. And, and that's, so that player, goes and sits out for two minutes, and so three other guys got to come out and kill. And those, when you kill penalties five on three, one of the things we, we ask you to do is go block a shot. And the reason TJ Lloyd couldn't finish the game is because we were put ourselves in a position where we were five on three and he had to go block a shot, and now we're down a player in, in TJ because he blocked a shot and it hit him in a spot where there wasn't a pad and he was hurt. So those are the kinds of things we're talking about. We, we don't think we're taking too many penalties, we're taking too many undisciplined penalties. And we'd like that to, 
Uh, there, there's certain penalties that, that you don't have any control over. If you, sometimes if you hit a guy too hard and it's a clean hit, the referee might deem that as a rough or a charge, and there's nothing you can do about that. But it's real easy to, to see a trip and a hook and a slash. Those are stick penalties, and we, we think we've got to eliminate those from our game. Uh, last one for me. You've seen St. Thomas already before, like I mentioned. What's the early scouting report on them this time going around? You know, we haven't seen them for a long time. They've been off for they, they, their break, I believe, started their last time they played, I think, was December 10th. And then they had an exhibition game over the weekend against the University of Minnesota. So they've had a long break, which for them probably felt good. You know, a lot of these kids, it was their first time playing Division One hockey. And, and so it, it was probably a lot. Um, so I'm sure they're coming back refreshed and excited to go. Uh, they had a 5-2 game with the University of Minnesota, who we all know is a, a really good team. Uh, our expectation is that they're going to be excited to play us in their building. You know, our game one here on Friday night, they got off to a, a lead. They scored early, and then they had a power play, and, and so they uh, they had some opportunities in that game to to advance that from a one goal lead, and and they they were in the game the whole time. So our goal is to, to focus on the things we can control and be ready to go right off the hop uh, because we have to believe that everybody we play the second half is looking at the same things we're looking at. And they're looking at the CCHA standings and they're trying to put themselves in the best position for the playoffs. And, and St. Thomas is no different than anybody else. <coughs> we'll go ahead. Any questions from the Zoom? Yeah, having seen them before, Coach, you expect an, an extra chip on St. Thomas's shoulder? Yeah, I, I don't know what to expect, honestly, because this is this is a new year for them, and and uh, I don't know if they've played anybody two times, uh, so we, we may be the first opportunity for them. So maybe it'll look different the second time. Uh, obviously, they're going to be at home, so that gives them some certainly gives them some more confidence. They're They've, they've, uh, you know, they won a league game at home against Fair State earlier in the year, so they've got to feel good about that. Uh, I would assume that they're going to be excited to play Bowling Green. Um, they're going to be excited to, you know, open up the second half, uh, and, and if that means they have a chip on their shoulder, we, we have to be prepared for that. Coach, Coach, after that Ohio State series, you said they played well, but you couldn't get the result. How important was it to get a win? Coming out of this Milwaukee road trip. Yeah, we, we talked about that. Uh, you know, if you look at our, our results, the last five or six games, lead, or let's say the last four games leading up to that, that tournament, uh, we didn't have uh, the kind of results that, that, you know, we're obviously all looking for. And for us to, to come out of that tournament after a difficult loss, you know, the, the, the Providence game was very similar to the Ohio State games in, in how we played and, and, and what we did for, for two periods and then unfortunately we weren't able to, to finish there in the third. But uh, to, to bounce back and win a game against Yale was, was a big deal for us because, you know, any, uh, there's, confidence is a huge piece to, to all sports and, and when you don't get the results you're used to getting or the results you necessarily want to get, it can, it can eat away at you a little bit. So you, you want to try to do as best you can to uh, to win, and, and, and when you do win, you certainly, it certainly makes everybody feel better. You guys didn't have uh, as, maybe as long of a break as other teams did just because you were playing right up until like, 17th, 16th, and then you guys came back a little early to go to Milwaukee. Do you think that gives you maybe, I don't know if, it, if it's an advantage, but do you think that helps you out maybe just because you didn't have to take a break and have the guys go home and eat a bunch of... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you, if you have a long break, you think it's too long. If you have a short break, you think it's too short, Jack. I mean, that's just kind of the way coaches' minds work. But you know, our, the good thing is, is we tried to communicate that to our guys early. They they knew when they could go buy their plane ticket home or when they'd be excused to go home. And and for a lot of guys, um, when they go home. These guys, once they get to, to, to college, the, their routine is, is something that they're used to and they're comfortable with and they, that they become creatures of habit, I guess, you know? So when they go home, <laughs> you know, the, they may or may not have ice available. They, they may or may not have a gym that's open. They may or may not have, there, there's a lot of variables that they can't control. And so our guys, the biggest, the most important thing for them was to go home and, and recharge their batteries and see their family and enjoy the holidays and, and that kind of stuff and then I think they were excited to come back and and you know uh, be back with their teammates and, and it's a fun time you know when over the holiday break when you're playing and you, you, it, it's just hockey it's there's no school everybody enjoys that so I don't know if we 
had a disadvantage or an advantage. You know, the fact that our guys didn't get a lot of time off means that they it didn't take them a lot of time to get back into quote unquote playing shape and stuff, which was good. And and to, to bounce back you know bounce back right into a tournament there was was good for us because we only had really three practices and then we jumped right back in it and and then we gave them some days off over the over the holidays and or over the new year and, and that kind of stuff and and then like I said this week has been back to normal so it doesn't feel like we've missed much and, and it doesn't feel like they've missed much we've been back doing everything's been pretty normal so that's been good so I we're hoping it's an advantage going into this weekend but we'll see it's just talking about the, maybe a little bit of follow-up to that you guys played all, all four of those non-conference games you guys played, but two Ohio State games and then the two Kampa tournament games, they're all pretty close games. I know that, I mean, the 6-2 to two was, I think this, this scoreline was not indicative of how you guys actually played. Um, is that frustrating that you guys just came so close and weren't able to sort of get over the hump in in some of those games? That I, I know those, those two Ohio State games, obviously rivalry games, you want to win those. Is that a frustrating thing or is that something that, okay, we know what we need to do, what conference play when these points count, or when these points count for points. Yeah. Honest answer would be frustrating, yes, absolutely. Um, players are frustrated, coaches were frustrated, not not with each other, but frustrated that, um, you know, sometimes sports are, are unfair, and, and you can play really good and, and, and not win. And, um, you know, in, in our sport, um, goaltenders have, have the potential to to steal games, and and if the if the goaltender is the best player on the ice for a certain team, that gives them a really good opportunity to win. And, and um, so we we played really well, and and so you try to take the teachable moments from the games and the teachable opportunities from those games. And and we we did a lot of really good things, Jack. We we really did. You're right. The Providence game, we did a bunch of really good stuff. Ohio State series, a bunch of really good stuff. And and so we tried to take from that and, and, and give us something some things to build on. And then, you know, you, you just you want so badly, the kids work hard and you want them to have success. And when you play well and don't don't get the result, it is frustrating. Uh, but our, you know, like we said on, on Monday when we got back to practice, hey, we, we had our Monday morning meeting and we closed the books on the first half. And we, we talked honestly about the first half and we own our results, we own our statistics, you know, our goals against and our goals for and our power play and penalty kill percentage and our one loss record, we own that. Now our, our focus is the second half and, and we, we definitely want to build on how we've been playing and, and improve uh, on, on that in the second half. It's just the last quick thing for me. I mean, you, I know you guys fifth place going in the second half. Do you think that's where you guys deserve to be right now, or do you think maybe you need that you guys can have the potential to go up, um, go up higher? Um, but obviously, you want the potential to go up higher. But do you think the first half is a fair representation of where you where you guys are as a, as a whole as a team? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a, that's a good question, Jack, and it's it's difficult to answer. I I, I think. Probably as much as any team in our league, uh, people had questions, people outside of our program, I mean, even inside of our program, had questions about what was Bowling Green going to be like this year? How, how were they going to be? Based on, we had nine, you know, we, we had 10 seniors last year. We lost nine of them. We lost, you know, two juniors uh, who, who didn't come back after graduating. Uh, so we had a bunch of new faces in our program. We have a new assistant coach. So there were some definitely some questions, not only with our personnel and and that kind of stuff, but but uh, you know we had transfers coming in, and so all in all, I, I think we're not. I don't think we're satisfied where we're at. We we felt like this group had the potential to be uh, a really good team, um, and and we felt like it was a team that the goal and and hopefully what would happen with all those new pieces would be that we were playing our best hockey at the end of the year, and and that's still the goal. Uh, we've played everybody in our league with the exception of Michigan Tech, so we know um, <coughs> we have some familiarity. We, we know who's who. Obviously, Mankato's done a really good job, and they put themselves in a position where everybody's going to have to chase them. I think if you look at the standings, uh, two through six right now is really tight. Uh, I think if, if I'm right, I'm, I'm not a math whiz by any stretch, Jack, but if I'm right, I think the difference between two and, and six is basically a weekend series. If you sweep a weekend, you get six points. Right? Am I right? So yeah, I'm looking at it now. it's it's really tight. So 
everybody's thinking the same. All, all those teams right there are thinking the exact same thing. If we can get on a run, if we can start playing well, if we can get hot, we can climb the standings, right? Uh, Bemidji's in second. If Bemidji's saying if we, can, if we can get on a run and we can stay hot and keep playing, we can keep second. You know, and, and, and the ones at the, toward the bottom are saying we can, we can catch them and we all play each other, which is the good thing. So you're going to have opportunities to um, gain on people that are in front of you or, or separate yourself on people that are behind you.